Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the uh, Sony Open for this weekend, uh, which is really the first main, the first real PGA tournament of the year. I thought it's it would be a good idea for me to at least share um, what these videos, at least for me, are going to look like. I, sometimes I will do a, uh, a joint video with Bobby where we go through tier by tier and player by player. Um, when I do it myself, it's going to be a little different. What I want to show you is just kind of the process that I use or I'm going to be using to build lineups, which I think is pretty much working across most sports right now. And it's it's a way that, you know, you could use the tools at your disposal if you're a true DFS subscriber that can save you time and, and know that the work's been put in for you already. And still be able to, you know, put your own twist on things and to make your own decisions and, you know, build yourself, uh, build yourself some, some decent lineup. Sorry, I had to pause for a second. Hope I didn't ruin my, uh, my delivery, my flow of information there. But as I, I think I was just mentioning that uh, I want to show you how, again, you could use the true DFS tools at your disposal to make kind of a good lineup and portfolio of lineups and at least know what, what's going on here. So again, we're going to show you the true DFS sheets. Again, we're not going to do this every week, but because uh, it is only available for premium subscribers. But from time to time, I will I will do this to kind of show you kind of the end result of all of the research. Now, again, I'm not going to get involved in how these fantasy points, these projected projected fantasy points, are derived, uh, and the drill downs and all this stuff. Um, that's just for people much smarter than I am. What I like to do is, is take the models that are already created by, by professional projection makers in the industry. And then what I do is I back tested all these different models for accuracy and create kind of a decent little formula and algorithm that weights them in a certain way that comes up with what I think is the best overall median projection out there. Um, because it combines them both. It can, can combines them in a very intelligent way. Um, and I do the same thing with projected ownership. And I will list the projected fantasy points and ownership in columns C and E in these sheets. Um, now, again, it's not just about providing the median uh, uh, projection because we don't really want the median projection in our lineups. We want ceiling outcomes, but, but this is at least a good place to start. And then you'll see in column D, point per dollar is, is the most traditional a way to assess value. And then you have Sheets Value Score, which is a combination of just pure fantasy points and then also kind of a function of uh, points per dollar, which at least provides, for me at least, the best visual you know, of, of, of whether someone's a good player or not is to rank them by Sheets Value Score. Um, and so I'm going to go through what I think is a good process for building lineups, whether it be single entry or, and then we're going to talk about how to use SaberSim to build, um, to build uh, MME type lineups as well. So this is the, oh, these are the sheets for today's, well, actually for tomorrow's slate. And I've listed everybody kind of by, you know, by sheets value score. And you'll, and what I want you to look at again, when you're building lineups is say, okay, do I think that I could build a lineup with just the top guys, okay? Listed by sheets value score. And what's neat to observe is when you get guys that are lower priced, that rate high in sheets value score, because quite honestly, uh, raw points are, is, is, is raw points are more important than value. Okay, like if you told me that someone was, you know, let's take it to the extreme. Like $100 in salary is going to earn two points. Or let's say they're going to earn, you know, 10 points. Well, that's 10 times value. The 10 points doesn't do anything for you, you know, where if someone was saying 12,000, but I know they were going to score 20, you know, you know, 36 points, even though that's only three times value, then I'd rather have that, okay, if I can do it. So when you have a guy that's rated a high sheets value score, that's also reasonably priced. Those are usually very, very strong plays. Um, now, the first thing that you'll look at when you look at, this is what I do, is I look at, okay, JT Poston, Keith Mitchell, uh, Matt Kuchar, Chris Kirk, um, 
uh, K.H. Lee. These guys are are what I consider the stronger plays because they're they're strong enough on a on a value perspective to stay up here, and yet also strong enough on a raw points perspective to get into that sheets value score ranking. So the first thing I look at is Poston, Mitchell, Lee, and Kucher. Okay. Um, the next thing I like to look at is how highly rated these top spends are relative to everybody else. So like, for example, if Sun JM were a huge, huge, had a huge sheets value score edge over the other guys, I might be more inclined to make sure to play him, you know? And, and if I were going to do that, then what I would probably do is re-rate all these guys based on sheets, uh, based on points per dollar. And make sure that, you know, I was getting enough value to play somebody like C, uh, Sun JM. But in a situation like today, where there's not that big of a difference between these top guys, when it comes to building single entries and, and, and just without even using an optimizer, I find that you could just visualize this and just stare at this screen and build a lineup with just these mid-range guys, you know, just start with someone like Post, Mitchell, Kucher, and then this kind of builds itself. Like, like for example, let's just let's just do this. Now, again, this is not necessarily going to be the actual lineup I make because there's going to be a lot of projection updates that are going to change between the rest of the day and ownership and all that stuff. But so we'll put in Poston, Mitchell, Kucher. And um, who is it? Kirk was the other guy. So if you start with these four guys, then you could just then you could build lineups with whoever you want. You know, now you can go back and play Sun Jam if you want. You can go back and play Harmon if you want. You know, you could play pretty much anything because you're starting with these good mid range builds, these good mid range plays. So if you did play M, like for example, though, in a lineup like this. It would be fine because then you could play any of these 8K guys that I'll show you. They're kind of showing up, you know, um, uh, Putnam, Spawn, guys like that. Okay. So because you have these kind of very strong mid range plays, you know, you can kind of get away with this. Right. So that's really literally what I would do is for my single entry builds just look at the sheets value score in the true DFS sheets. And just see how many of these top guys I can get into one lineup and just plow away, you know. Now, that does not take into account ownership, though, right? So the next thing I would do is just double check and see if I was getting the uber chalk build. And, you know, it's not that bad. You know, this Chris Kirk at 7% is very, I mean, that's a, it's a really, really strong play, you know. And then you have Keith Mitchell at only 12%, given the way he rates. It's a very, very strong play. So. Um, uh, I'm not too worried about the ownership component of building this way on this particular occasion. So um, that's step one is just using the true DFS sheet. Just visualize it. Just see how many of these you can get in. And you're probably going to build pretty decent lineups that way. Now, if you wanted to get more, I don't want to say fancy, but if you wanted to get more, you know, fact, factor into account upside correlation and, and, and ownership fade and, and things like that. Um, now is where we bring uh, Saberson into the mix, right? So what Saberson is gonna do is it's gonna take my projections, we're gonna upload them. And what Saberson does a hell of a lot better than I will is take that into consideration, like ownership fade, uh, upside, like the right end of the projections, right? What I was going based on is just median, but what, Sabersim does will build lineups based on a whole wide range of outcomes, giving you as a bucket of lineups and picking from them the highest upside lineups, given everything you put in, which is a, a lot better than I can do in my just visualization technique, which which I think is actually pretty good though for just making a single entry build. So let's upload the projections to uh, Sabersim and let's have it build say 150 lineups. And we're going to use their default sliders, which basically gives you a lot of 
randomness as far as diverse uh, simulation diversity goes, goes and a decent amount of ownership fade. So let's see what building 150 Linus will get us as far as kind of a breakdown of ownership. Um, and I wonder if the guys that I mentioned, like Poston, Mitchell, you know, Kucher, how much or how little they're going to show up uh, in lineups that Saberson build as opposed to ones that were built by hand. Let us see. Sometimes it correlates nicely with what I do, and sometimes uh, it's just totally different. So here, it actually puts Sunjay M and Tom Kim at the top of the list. And it's basically building much more of a Stars and Scrubs uh, build, right? All these 10 threes, uh, M, M, Harmon. Um, it's not doing as much of the middle range uh, it's, uh, as, as I would be doing. Um, now, that's not saying right or wrong, but that's just what a lineup's built with Saber Sim are going to get you on this particular slate. Um, a couple of other things you could do. I mean, if you want, this is, this is kind of advanced stuff, but, but what you can do is you can have Sabres and builds with kind of a, 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 a cutoff. So like, let's say you only wanted to play the top, you know, 40 rated sheets value score guys. You could upload only these guys into Sabres and and then it could make a decent blend of using the, the true DFS projections based on median, but also getting that Sabre Sim variance by just limiting the number of golfers that you will throw in there. Okay. Um, I guess that's pretty much all I have for this for, for today. You know, I wanted to make these about, yes, about what to do on the slate, but also just kind of give you a framework that you can use every week you know, to go ahead and build some good lineup. So what I would do, honestly, is about, listen, if you're up, I would wait till an hour before lock, make sure that nobody is, you know, withdrawn. Hopefully, I will have had the most updated projections up there by then. Um, I, I'm not going to set my alarm for 5 a.m. if that's when the slate goes. Um, to give an update, I'll probably do it the night before. So you'll have to do you know, kind of a real-world sanity check, real-world sanity check to make sure that your, um, your golf is still in and do this exact process that I just did. And I think that you're gonna be kind of off to a good start with respect to building good quality um, GPP lineups. And that will do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.